Hello and welcome back to Real Fishing 2, the walkthrough. Today, we are looking at the lake. The lake is stage 10. Uh, it's called largemouth bass fishing, but the requirements to finish this are to catch one largemouth bass over 2 feet and one bluegill over 10 inches. Much like the variety ocean fishing, this has three different areas you can uh, you can work with. So I'm looking at the description now. You can read through that. Uh, you want to change your baits based on what the fish are biting on. Uh, the second one has a couple of standing logs, but uh, underwater you can actually see there are some sunken logs, so the game is not lying to you. One thing I've been very impressed about with this game, exploring through it, is that there's very few lies in the manual or the game that I've found so far. Uh, these trees have some wider stumps, and some of the best areas here are around the trees, and it, it, it tells you uh, to go other places. But I like, carefully cast your lure and let your imagination run free. There's also, there are lots of bluegill too, but don't belittle them. That's some of that uh, kind of beautiful localization. But uh, but here we go with the lake. We're going to start in area one with the default bait. It is a, uh, I think it's a floating minnow. We're just going to cast and retrieve. Now we currently are, as we unlocked this, we are in the early summer months. Um, I believe we are like May or June as I was unlocking this. So we're going to see a largemouth here on that first area. You can see the reeds on the bottom. So this tells me that uh, I think the map of this area is more or less recreated underwater. So you can see here the fish jumping. This is my, my first cast of this area. There's another little tail walk there. Very nice effect. Thank you, bass. Um, I'm getting better at fighting these fish the way that uh, a lot of these fish need to be played as you're bringing them in. Um, you want to keep your line tension pretty low while the fish is running, which again, that's what the manual tells you to do. I should have listened or read that uh, more clearly. Um, and then when the fish do turn and, and thrash to try to throw the hook, you uh, that's when you need to be able to, to pull on them. So you can pull the rod and reel. Both You can do um, like times one speed reeling or fast reeling. So the normal speed reeling is just with the X button. The fast reeling is with X and square together. Um, so using those will help turn a fish. So here I'm looking at uh, looking at my baits. I'm going to, you have many, many, many different lures you can use here. And I've turned my line up to the 20 pound. I've been uh, changing to that and I've not seen any detrimental effects of changing to a stronger line, but it does allow you to really horse smaller fish in. So when you do hook, some of the fish that you know are not going to be the winners, you can just put down the um, the X and square buttons and pull them in quickly. So with the worm type baits, the plastic worm type baits, they don't actually have to be retrieved at all points to uh, to be viable to to get a bite. Some of the other ones like the crank baits and spinner baits, you have to be reeling them. But uh, the worm type baits, you can leave them sitting and you can uh, get a bite. But uh, you do have slack on your line, so when you pull just with uh, the down arrow or the left and right arrows, you're pulling line, but if you've already pulled it in, the lure won't move because you have slack until you reel the slack in. So it's a, it's a, in that way, it's very realistic with how they have designed these, uh, these areas. So it's pretty cool. I try to keep the lure moving. Uh, one thing I'm trying... A little bit is trying to see if I can if I can actually pull the fish in um, by by dangling the lure if I can get them closer to the uh, to the boat or closer to the the zero coordinate where they are considered landed um, once I do that because it seems like the map is recreated I don't I haven't confirmed that even as I'm recording this but that's something I'm looking into to see if there's a way that you can do that if you get a bite um, can you can you draw the fish closer without actually having to reel them of course, it's not worth it on this one. So that's a, a 7.2 inch bluegill in this second area. And we're looking for a bluegill over 10 inches. I decided to devote my efforts at first to getting the bluegill. Uh, again, I'm not exactly sure how the mechanics of this work um, in terms of where the game is processing things. I, I'm guessing that there's a fish count still, that um, larger fish start to spawn as you, uh, as you increase your fish count in an area. So I brought my worm close to the log and I'm just going to leave it sit there for a few seconds and uh, often that's enough to get a bite. So the plastic worm doesn't always have to be moving. In fact, when I was just retrieving it, I wasn't seeing uh, very many bites in this area. So again, with the wide diversity of lures that you have access to in, in this game, you do need to be very mindful of that. I haven't done much experimentation with color. I usually will, will pick a color and go with it. And if that bait 
is drawing fish and I'm in the right area, um, I will just kind of stick with what I what I come up with. My guess is color has something to do with the uh, the RNG, but I'm not quite sure it's worth um, learning that or or trying really hard. You can see here I've switched to another plastic worm kind of bait, except this is the plastic uh, crayfish bait. And I have found that this spot right here in front of the main tree, in the shadow of this main tree, I was hooking uh, bluegills of a decent size almost every time with a plastic bait of some kind. In this case, it's the, uh, the crawfish. So I just stayed right here. So this was my system for a while, um, just catching bluegills of a larger and larger size in the shadow of this log, this uh, dead stump here, until I am able to pull in a bluegill of the size needed to go in the log before I can start chasing after those largemouths. Now, uh, there are cuts in this video. Um, so you, you will be seeing um, this jump around a little bit. So the cuts that you'll see do have, um, they'll show you that some time has passed. This was played out, I think in about 90 or so minutes of, uh, of gameplay time to uh, get all the fish I needed to get the practice on retrieving the fish and uh, finding out where they are. And as you'll see, even changing the months of the year uh, as we go through. So 9.6, we're very, very close to uh, getting what we need. Very, very close to what we need. Um, so the 10 inch bluegill is that goal. Um, but so every session you have um, a limited amount of time on the fish screen right there. So where you're looking at the, uh, at the scenery. And you can see that actually in my Real Fishing Relaxation series, if you're watching any of those and listening to the soundtrack and the sound effects, um, you can see what a full session looks like and then the game will tell you time to stop fishing. Each one of those is one real uh, week in the game. So one week passes every time you do that. So this bluegill, 11, almost 12 inches, uh, that's gonna be the bluegill that we need. That's the size of bluegill that is gonna be required to make it work here. So. I'm going to jump over to area three with the crawdad again, the uh, the plastic crawdad. And now we're in the month of August. And something that I was not uh, careful enough to make note of, in the description of this, it talks about the hot summer months. And I noticed that this area did say that you can find fish here even in the hot summer months. So I was finding decent sized bass. Here you can hear the, um, hopefully the, the slightly deeper sound of the water thrashing. This means it's a bass over a foot long. So I knew that I was on the right track in this area by putting a crawdad uh, right next to those tree stumps and, and hooking them. So here you can see I'm letting the fish run a little bit. This is where the 20 pound line helps and here I'm even loosening the drag because when you see that, when your line distance is short, this fish is clearly close to the boat, the stress on the line really, really increases quite a bit. Uh, we didn't hear the line stretching sound on that fish, but if that's a little bit larger, we would be hearing that sound and loosening the drag can help uh, the fish from breaking your line off when they get close. So I think that's one of the reasons the manual tells you not to horse fish in too close too soon, because if they go on a big run and they don't have room to run, uh, that stress goes on your line. And real life monofilament line, the longer line is out there, the more it can stretch. So it can actually can take a lot more strain when it's longer. So here's another deeper sound in the, uh, the fish thrashing. Um, so I'm reeling a little bit here, but not a lot. There's times when I'm, I'm letting off the reel and letting the fish run as right now. And now when the fish turns back towards me, I will, do, I will do some reeling to pull the fish in to get some progress. But when the fish turns and does the, the thrash to throw the hook, that's when I am pushing the down key and swinging the rod to kind of forcefully turn the fish. I'm adjusting my drag up and down uh, with the L1 and uh, L2 keys. You can go looser. I see as the fish goes to the edge right there, that's another uh, heavy line strain is when the fish pulls all the way to the right or left. So I loosened it up as it went to the edge, and then as the fish turned back towards the boat, I tightened the drag up to give me a little bit more power in pulling. And it's uh, it's hard to see as you're watching, but uh, you do develop a good feel for it as you get more practice. So there it says time to stop fishing. And I left this in so that you could see what we're looking at here. Um, I'm going to look at my fishing spot. I'm gonna go back 
and I'm going to go to the magazine. Now, the magazine tells me it's the first week of September. Um, and the magazine changes every month that you go through the game. It tells me sea bass fishing is back, so that means that season is open again. And then it says, there weren't too many places for bass during summer, but now that fall has arrived, shake out your summertime blues. Um, and then char fishing is ending soon. I've already caught the char I need for this year, so I don't need to go back there. And it always gives you an update on what is going on in variety ocean fishing because the season changing has lots of different fish appearing there. But uh, the, the bass note really caught my eye that the high summer of August and the heat of August uh, may not have been uh, providing me with the bass that I needed. So out of curiosity, I just stuck with area one here because this area one is, uh, it tells you that there are more largemouth bass than bluegill in area one. In those in those reeds and this was the first cast I made into those reeds I kept the uh, the crawdad because I just I liked the action of it and right away you're hearing the deeper thrashing so this is a larger fish and this fish is going for the run that's the thrash 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 and I was not able to turn that fish so I already know we're in a good spot where I have fish that are large enough to throw that hook and I'm not able to to muscle them out so um, we're going to go for another cast here with our crayfish, and we're going to see what we hook. Take a listen on this fish, if you will, and right there. So you can hear the sound of the thrashing is even a little bit lower pitched than the other, uh, the other fish. So, so far we've heard three different um, sounds there. So the bluegills and the small bass have one sound. The one foot to two foot fish have uh, a, the different sound that has kind of two pulses to it. And this one has the even deeper sound. So here I'm adjusting my drag all over the place throughout this fight. Um, I'm trying to keep pressure on the fish, but when it's running, I'm letting it run. I'm letting it run until it, because right now it's not at risk to throw the hook. When it's just running laterally, it's tiring itself out, but it's not at risk to throw the hook out. And I'm saving my line tension for when the fish may turn and try to thrash and throw the hook so that I can put the yanks on that fish. And I thought the fish was going to go for a jump there, but actually just came up to the surface. And I... And here I kind of went YOLO there. You saw me tighten the drag all the way down to pull that fish all the way in. Um, and it almost it did one turn there. It actually could have put a lot of strain on the line if it had had some strength to go on a run right there. But that is the, um, that's the level advance jingle you just heard there that I talked over, of course. Uh, so 2.13 feet. Uh, that combined with the bluegill that we caught earlier in this video, of course, in uh, game time, that was something like a month or two ago, uh, maybe six weeks ago, six sessions <laughs> of game time ago. But that is the lake cleared out, and it's cleared out just in time because the lake fishing does close up uh, a little bit later in the fall. So uh, we can advance to one of the trout levels that's going to be going on, um, also kind of ending here soon in the early fall. So if you've liked this series or if you have thoughts on it or if you have questions for me, I'll try my best to answer them if I can. Leave me a comment down below. You can also hit me up on Twitter where I am active underscore ATE. And we will see you in the next video.